I coded a web app that tracks Amazon prices using ChatGPT and Python. To track prices of a product, you only have to type the name of a product and how many pages you want to scrape. Then the app will scrape the data, compare the price with previous datasets, and list the product showing how much the price has decreased or increased. And that's pretty much it. And in this video, I'll show you how to do all of this from scratch. So let's get started. All right, before we start using ChatGPT, let's see all the elements that are going to be part of this app. First, we have the app.py. Here we define the routes and functions that will handle the requests. Then there is Amazon underscore products.py that will script the data and wrangle the data to display it in the page. Then we have two HTML files, search and result. The first has the inputs we need to pass to script data and the second shows the list of products with a change of price. Finally, we have the static folder. Here I downloaded the logo of Amazon that will go on top of the page and will also add some CSS. All right, now let's create the prompt. Okay, first we're gonna tell ChatGPT to create a web app using Flask and Python. And the app.py should have two main functions, the search and result function. And basically these functions will render the search HTML page and the results HTML page. Also, the results function will render a page with a list of products, which is this list of products that you can see here, which are the products that we scraped from Amazon. Okay, in the second part of the prompt, we're going to tell ChatGPT how we're going to extract this data. And well, we tell it that we're going to call a function named extract underscore data. And the inputs that we're going to give this function are the keyword, which is the name of the product, then the number of pages and the current date. And the current date, we get this with a date time module. Okay, in the last part of the prompt, we tell ChatGPT what happens if the user only wants to filter data. For example, if you want to filter the product by price or by name, you're not going to type the keyword or the number of pages again. So we have to tell ChatGPT what to do. And in this case, we're going to read a CSV file named price underscore change. And this CSV file is generated from the struct underscore data function that was mentioned in the second part of the prompt. Also, I'm telling ChatGPT to filter the names and the products using the pandas library. And finally, as a note, I'm telling ChatGPT that the inputs, such as the keywords, the number of pages, or the filters are optional. So the user may introduce use them or not. Now that this is complete, I'm going to press enter and wait until ChatGPT generates all the code. So it's generating the search function, the result function, and also the extract data function that I'm going to modify later. I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to paste it on app.py, which is here. Then I'm going to tell ChatGPT to create a search HTML page. And well, now it's creating the HTML page with all the inputs. So it's the keywords input, the number of pages, the minimum and maximum price. And well, I copy this HTML code and go to my templates and paste it on search that HTML. Now to test the HTML code, I'm going to the app.py and I'm going to comment out most of the code. So we first focus on the HTML code. So now I open the terminal and start the app.py. So now we go to this local host and then we press enter and we see that everything is working fine, but this could look much better. So I'm going to tell ChatGPT to do some modifications. I'm going to tell ChatGPT to center the content in the search.html page and then add a line break between the inputs and also add an image of a logo that I'm going to download. And then ChatGPT is going to generate the HTML code. And once it's done, I'm going to copy the HTML code and I'm going to paste it instead of the code I had before. So I copy this code, I paste it in search.html, and now I'm gonna check out on the website, and here I'm gonna restart the app.py. I press enter, and we see that the website looks much better, but there is something missing, the logo. So I'm going to PyCharm, and here I have the logo, logo.png, this is the Amazon logo, and you have to make sure that this file is inside the static folder. Once this file is there, we have to go to the HTML, and we have to type the name of the file inside the src attribute. And in this case, I'm going to use the URL underscore for function because I want to make sure that plus is going to search in the static folder. Then I go to the website again and now I am going to restart the app.py. We refresh the page and now we see the Amazon logo, but it's too big. So we have to add some CSS to modify the size. So I tell ChatGPT add CSS to customize the size of the logo image. And then ChatGPT is going to generate the code. And then we have to copy the code and insert it first in the HTML page and insert the class attribute in the HTML page and then open the styles.css and paste the CSS code. 
Then we have to go back to the HTML page and paste the link tag and specify what's the name of our CSS file. In this case, it's tiles.css. Here we have to write the name. And well, that's pretty much it. And now to see the results, we go to the page and now we refresh. And we see that we have to modify a little bit the width and the height. And if we go back to the page and refresh, we'll see that the logo looks now much better. Okay, now that the HTML part is completed, let's have a look at the code generated by ChatGPT on the apps that buy. So here we have the results function and here we have the five inputs that are on the home page. So here are the keyword, the number of pages, minimum price and maximum price and the filter by name. So those are the five inputs and well ChatGPT created this part of the code. Then we have the current date and we use this date as an input in our struct data function. And this struct data function is basically the function that extracts all the data from Amazon. And I created this function using the same steps I showed you in the video where I scrape Amazon using ChatGPT. The steps are the same. In case you want to check that video, I'm going to leave the link on the description. Okay, let's have a look at the struct underscore data function. So here's the function and well, it has three inputs and we struct the name of the product, the image of the product and the price. Then we export all this data into a CSV file that has the current date in the name of the file. For example, I have a CSV file that has all the data that I extracted in the previous test. So the name, the price and the image and also the date. Well, that's one example. And now we have to import this function from the Amazon underscore product file. So here I import this function and then we have to make some tweaks to the code that ChatGPT generated. First, this products variable is not gonna be equal to the struct underscore data function because this struct underscore data function actually export a CSV file and this CSV file is this one that you can see here. And that's the purpose of the struct underscore data function to generate a CSV file with all the data scraped. And we're gonna use this CSV file to compare the prices of the products using the previous data scraped as a reference. Okay, now what I'm going to show you is another function, but this function I created on my own without using ChatGPT. This function is this one, get price change. And what this function does is clean the data that we extracted. So we remove some null data, remove some duplicates, rename the data types and columns, and then we concatenate all the data script from different dates. And once we have the data frame with all that data concatenated, we compare the product price from the last date with the price of the product we obtained the first time we scraped this data. And well, we export all this data into a CSV file that I'm named price underscore change. And well, now we have to import this function from the Amazon underscore product script. And after we do this, we have to make some modifications. First here, I'm going to use the get underscore price underscore change function instead of extract underscore data. And well, this function, you already know what it does. And well, I'm gonna copy this get underscore price underscore change and paste it here. And this one has one input, which is the current date. And well, the current date, we have this, uh, this value from the date time module that is here that we that chat gpt generated this code so then what we have to do is modify the last line which is uh, products equal to products we have to add the that to underscore html and basically what this does is print that data frame in the website using the HTML format. And if we add the attribute escape and set it equal to false, we can also print the link of the images of the products that we scraped. Okay, now I'm gonna write some code to display the list of the products in the results HTML page. So here I write H2 with data script as subtitle, and then inside double curly braces, I write products and then save to display all the list of the products. Then I add this blog content to inherit the search page inside the results page. So here I write the extends function and now we have the content of the search page in the results page. Great, now it's time to test this out. So here first, I'm gonna delete this extract data function that ChatGPT generated, and I'm gonna add that debug equal to true. Then I go back to the site, and here I restart the local host, and I refresh the page, and I'm gonna scrape iPhones and two pages. Then we press on search and wait and see what happens. So here we have an error, and it has to do with the int data type. So here, these some inputs, the number of pages, the minimum and maximum price, 
they have to be integers. So it's time to debug using ChatGPT. And I'm going to tell ChatGPT that in the app that pi, the three variables that I mentioned before should be integers. So now you can see that ChatGPT is debugging the code. And I'm going to copy this part of the code because this is the only part that changes. And I'm going to paste it here. So basically, it's the if condition and we have to change this block. And I'm making some tweaks to the code that ChatGPT generated because I don't think it's correct. And well, those are some simple tweaks. I'm just moving some code and that's basically what I did. Finally, I'm going to add a get price change that we had before, but we uh, remove it when we pasted the code that ChatGPT generated. Here is the get price change and well, this is equal to products. And now the app.py is completed. Great. Now I'm going to make some final modifications to the search HTML page. First, I'm going to put the blog content inside the div tag and then I'm going to modify the content inside the styles tag. Here I'm going to write text align center just to center only the text. Great. Now let's go back to the page for our final test. I open the terminal, restart up that pie and now we uh, search for the keyword iPhone and two pages. So here you see that we're scraping Amazon and the data script is here. So we see the food of the iPhones and we see the prices and the change of the price. So this is all the data that we scraped and also we compared the last price with the first price. And now let's see if the filters are working. Here I'm going to filter by price. Uh, for example, minimum price 100 and maximum 200. And now we see that we got an error. And this error has to do with the ELIF statement inside the app.py. And well, here what we have to do is modify the code so that the price filter and name filter are independent. And to do this, we have to separate into two if statements. So the first if statement, if min price and max price, and well, this is going to just uh, use the condition that you see here. And the second if a statement is only with the name, uh, with the name of the product, in this case, the filter name. So we write filter name. And here what we do is use the contains function to filter by the name and also use the case attribute and set it equal to false. So this is not case sensitive. Great. Now let's test this one more time. So I restart the app.py and we will refresh the page and I write again iPhone and then two pages. So we're going to scrape two pages of the iPhone products and we see here all the products. So let's test the filter. So 100 to 500 and in the filter name only iPhones. And we see that now we successfully filter all these products. And iPhones are not the only products that you can scrape. You can actually scrape any product on Amazon. For example, here I'm uh, scraping laptops and then I'm scraping TVs and well, you see that it's working perfectly. And after I make a couple of tests, I realized that there is one little thing that we have to fix. And in this case is this issue that you see here. And what I did was just move some lines of code. And after I did this, everything was working just fine. And that's how you build an Amazon price tracker using Python.